Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Gold Bazan. This is Pasha Hajian speaking. A few months ago, I was in the beautiful city of Lisbon, and it was a great honor for me to be able to go to one of the world's biggest clubs, Benfica, and speak to three notable coaches. They've done such fabulous job for this club. And, you know, you guys might be wondering this, why a podcast such as Gold Bazan that focuses on Asian and Iranian football will be interviewing, you know, coaches from Benfica. Because I we believe that, you know, end of the day, football is so big and it all comes down to grassroots level. Something that Mehdi Mahdav Kia is doing right now with his his academy, FC Kia, and he always talks about the importance of grassroots level, something that Iran is struggling with and many, I would say, Asian countries are struggling with. So this club, Benfica, as you may or may not know, they've been producing many, many top players that have gone for millions and millions to other clubs. Basically, they're called Europe's production line. And a lot of the coaches now, they've changed positions since we last spoke to him, Jao Traolo. Um, you know, he was a U23 coach, but actually a couple of days ago, he got a job to be coaching AS Monaco um, as an assistant coach alongside Thierry Andre. Then you have Renato Paiva, you know, an absolutely brilliant man. Uh, it was fantastic to do an interview with him, too. And then you also hear another notable uh, coach as well with the work he's doing so uh, they've been a lot of tweaks there in this past couple of months for them and uh, i wish you know all of them the best but as always enjoy this latest episode of gold bazan and hello everyone my name is samson tamajani i'm the editor of the gold bazan podcast now in this episode with some interviews there was some issues with static and some technical difficulties fortunately we had to scrap some of those bad parts but we did keep most of what Pasha has with the Benfica coaches, which are amazing, as you'll get to hear right now, and hope you'll find it enjoyable. Thanks for listening. Which I know... You know, approximately majority of your players are Portuguese, but how hard is it for, let's say, an international player, whether it's come, because I'm arranging myself, there's a lot of market uh, in Iran right now, and for these players to come to the, you know, Benfica, how do you guys look at the scouting system when it comes to international? Is that something that you work on yourself, or do you have somebody that helps you with that? Yes, we have a department who works with scouting, international scouting. Uh, we know, I can't, I can't tell you. We know every player in every age group in, the, in, in Europe, the most part of the world, because we have a very good department in this, uh, in this, in this area, the scouting. And of course, the, 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 the coordination between us, uh, technical part and scouting part, uh, is, 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 is already done. The channel is created also, and uh, uh, the, the process becomes from, of course, the first analyze the player, observe the player, and then they, they, they play with, they, they train with us, integrated, and then we, we made a report uh, in, in common, in common not, but in, in, in coordination with the scouting, the scouting system, and if the player have the, the talent and have the, the, the profile to, to stay, he will stay, because we think it is a club of the world, it's not club of Portugal, and as you know, today is, uh, the, it's, it's more easy to, 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 to play for Benfica, if, even if you are from any part of the world. So right now this is inside Benfica's academy. I like to call it the production line of Europe because of how many top players you guys have produced and sold to other major teams. Just my last question to you coaches, thank you again for your time, is I know there's something called the mystique when it comes to Benfica. How would you differentiate that from other clubs to the world? What makes Benfica Academy so different from your own standards um, from the other major teams in the world? I can't tell you the secret, but <laughs> of course, I'm just, just kidding, but of course, um, and in one hand, the demanding environment, because we are always uh, prepared to win, but in the other hand, uh, the friendly education that we have, I think it's one of the biggest secrets. And my last question, coach, is um, what do you think about Portugal's chances in the World Cup? Yeah, I believe it because, as you know, it, it depends always uh, in the way that you, you start. Of course, we have a tough group. Spain is not easy. Morocco is not easy. Uh, Iran is not easy also. They are very tough teams, but it depends how we can deal with the group. Uh, but if you remember two years ago, Portugal uh, have been some struggle in, in the group and... 
and they they achieved the the final they achieved the championship and i believe that one thing i can assure you as a portuguese uh, we will do everything to to go further in the competition i think we can the chances are equal compared with the others of course we have a powerful uh, national teams and with more winning uh, trophies but i think we have our chances we have the best player in the world uh, we have a lot of players a lot of young talented players we have a top coach and we most most important than that we have uh, the most exciting uh, fans and the most powerful fans that we can have the portuguese are very linked with our national team and for sure for sure for sure it will be a very good strength Coach, thank you again so much for your time. Coach Hanato Vaiva, thank you again for your time. Pasha Hajjan speaking. How are you feeling today? How you been? Everything okay? Yeah, fine. Thank you. When you wake up as a, a Benfica coach, you face your day with, uh, with a smile on your face and very motivated. So, uh, especially when you coach uh, kids, um, young boys, and help them to develop as a players. Uh, um, for a people that, uh, for a person that likes football, uh, I think few things are better than than this one. Coach, today I had the privilege of uh, seeing your facilities, talking to the U19 coach, the U15, and what's interesting is that how many years you guys have been coaching at Benfica, whether that's been as a past player or now as a coach. The longevity that has very made me mesmerizing as a fan or as a journalist or whatever you want to call me as, is how important has that been as a coach for you to implement that, that same strategy onto your players? And why is it that the club cares so much about sticking to the philosophy? Yes, um, if, if um, first of all, that's a clear sign that the club has a philosophy because there are clubs that... Uh, has not philosophies, just uh, work by working. Um, I think it's very important uh, that the club has this philosophy. Uh, believe in his professionals. Um, I am here, this is my 14th uh, year, so uh, the club had already time to analyze uh, coach Renato Paiva, person Renato Paiva, to understand if uh, is able to uh, being part of of, to, of of this project, so uh, it's very important because this gives you stability to us as coaches, as professionals, but also to the club that um, knows very well the persons that are in the field that work with the boys, that develop players, that prepare that players for. Um, the professional team so uh, I don't believe I, I'm completely sure that this is a fantastic uh, philosophy of the club um, and also uh, as you have several coaches and these several coaches are the same year after year also improves a team spirit between the coaches which in a structure uh, that uh, have uh, lots of coaches coaching different ages and sometimes you know uh, how, how, it, how does it work uh, I coach the under 17 but probably I'm thinking to coach the under 19 and the under 19 thinks to coach the under 20 and all of that so if you work together year after year you become friend you become uh, you know the person that that is uh, the persons that are around you and you make uh, uh, and you build a, a team spirit even in the, in the coaches that allows to to have and to 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 project a, a good work and the, the club will benefit um, with this I was very, you know, surprised also everything comes back to collect the decision that you guys make for if a player wants to make the next move, whether that's going from the youth level or getting to the B team or the first team. Mm -hmm. From your own experience, what distinguishes the U17 from your work compared to, let's say, the U15 or U19 side? First of all, they are one year older or two years older comparing to the under 15 and they are two years younger comparing <laughs> with the under 20. This is, uh, 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 I am joking, but this is true. Uh, you cannot forget that you, uh, first of all, uh, before 
you face a player, you are first in, you are facing a person, okay? And uh, when you structure and you when you plan uh, your work, you must plan and structure directly to the group age you you work with, because if you uh, define objectives or aims that are not um, accomplished or, 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 or easy to accomplish by the by the players um, you are working in a wrong way in my in my opinion so you have to understand first of all you have a person in your uh, in your front uh, you you work with persons first of all the age that they have uh, you cannot um, ask one thing to an under 17 player and the same thing to an under 15 and the same thing to an uh, under 20. So you have to measure that in the physical way, in the technical way, in the tactical way and in the psychological way. Uh, and um, these are the, 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 f the key points of performance of the players and you have to adapt them to the ages that you work with. Uh, and this is very important because sometimes one of the most well-known errors or mistakes that the coaches make is that I am in my room watching Barcelona in TV and then you want that your under-15 team make the same things that Barcelona made in the, on TV. And uh, that is impossible. First, because the ages are different and second, you don't have Iniestas and Chavis uh, all over the world uh, and everywhere. So uh, you have to be realistic and you have to analyze your environment, your context, context, uh, and adapt. And it's, that's the, the 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 key factor, the key point uh, to work with boys. Um, and then, of course, demand, 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 because this is a huge club. Uh, that demands a lot uh, of uh, players, coaches, directors, because we have uh, six million fans, so and they want to win. The history of this club is about winning and winning and winning. And uh, you, as a youth coach, you want to win. The players want to win, but first of all, as a youth coach, you have to develop players first, and. Uh, you cannot put winning uh, first, then develop. And sometimes to develop, probably you will not win. But if it's the better uh, decision that you make for the individual development of that player, uh, you are in the in, in the correct uh, in, in the correct way of working. So uh, more or less, it's about this. I, I think the big secret and the key point, as I told you, is to measure, to analyze the players and the ages, the persons that you have in front, and uh, adapt the, the objectives to them. Coach, fr from your own perspective, again, obviously congrats again on becoming European champions. A lot of those players from the youth level, they're at Benfica or Lisbon and other Portuguese clubs or even playing Delso, now they became champions, you know, playing for the national team. It all starts from grassroots. Mm -hmm. From your own experience, what distinguishes Portuguese players mentality from other European countries not mentality I will go by tradition or history uh, in Portugal for example I can compare with the United States for example in Portugal when you born 80% of the boys born with the ball in their hands the first um, the first object that the boy um, has to to play uh, is a ball. For example, in the United States, probably is a baseball uh, or a basketball or maybe or, a gun. Or maybe <laughs> a gun, probably. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, and I think this is cultural because yeah. uh, this is a, a country that uh, loves football. Yeah. Uh, is the biggest sport here. Is the most passion sport for the people and uh, it's completely different so i go not by mentality 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 is different because the players um, as they born with the ball in their hands they are used to relate with a ball 
and they became they very early they want to be footballers and very early they start um, doing things related with that even playing in their in their bedrooms even playing in in the streets even playing with the with the friends so um, this is uh, why I tell you that this is, is, is about tradition. And uh, if you start this as a young kid, easier to achieve your, your, your dreams. Uh, and then um, mentality is not so good in a Portuguese player because they early start feeling that they are good. Portuguese players technically are very, very good. Uh, not physically, but, but tactically are very good. And they understand the game uh, very quick. That's why we have so many good players here in Portugal and all over the world and the youth, uh, youth football in Portugal. Uh, so, if in an early moment I know that I am very good and if I am a boy, probably I think that I don't have to work uh, so much as I, I as I must, and th th not by mentality, but clearly about history, about tradition, about the the passion that that the football moves the people in Portugal, um, and for me this that's the the key point that makes the difference for other countries. And one thing that is more difficult to understand is. Um, in a small country as Portugal is uh, the, the number, the amazing number of players and, and coaches, but players that we have and we produce is amazing. And that's the thing that um, um, more difficult for me to understand. I have no answer for this. Okay. And I go by tradition and only. Question, yeah, <laughs> I, I go by tradition. That's it. Okay. I, if you have, as I told you, ten little boys of three years old, you go in a Portuguese street, for example. You, uh, if you have ten boys in the street with four or five years old, I believe that six are playing football, or are with a football ball in their hands. So I believe that this is the. the the reason. Coach, you talk a lot about, you know, I could feel the passion in you, mm -hmm. so I could imagine your players obviously feel that passion as well. Mm -hmm. A dear friend of ours is Carlos Queiroz, as you know, yeah. one of the biggest uh, names in Portugal, even as a coach. He always talks about how important it is to communicate. That's the number one trait, to communicate to your player. From a youth level, um, you know, these these boys, as you say, or they're turning to men. How important is it for you to develop them and communicate what you want from them to make them realize that this is the path that you need to go to for the next? Has there been any disturbances from what you've realized? Can maybe some players make mistakes, as I say, because that's another, I would say, issue for youth coaches is that you're, you're coaching not only them as a player, but as a human being. Of course. Uh, first of all, as I told you, you have a human being. Uh, working with you or to work with um, so you must not forget that you don't have here uh, robots that give that allows you to win titles or to win games you have uh, a boy that has a family that probably has a girlfriend that has feelings that has wills uh, and you have to to lead with this uh, all, all days uh, every day. Um, communicate is uh, probably I would say that is the most important thing not only football but in life. Mm -hmm. If you don't communicate well probably I am communicating with you but a, a bad a wrong word can create a problem between us mm -hmm. but probably that's not my intention. To, to create a problem, right. but a, a wrong, if I choose a wrong word, probably I will start a problem. Um, and if you are teaching football, and if you are a second father uh, for these boys, and believe me, that some fathers say to me, 
please say this to my kid because he will listen to you first than than the father than me father and when you listen to this information coming from a father uh, makes you think the imp how important are you in, in the development of, of this player and of this person so this is a big responsibility mm. I believe that uh, everybody can be a professional coach if, uh, if he has technical qualifications for that but uh, not everybody can be a youth coach sorry it's impossible you have to be you have to have another qualifications to uh, work with uh, young boys um, and the communication is very very important because first must be clear because if you want to demand uh, one thing or demand to the players some behaviors you have to be clear crystal in what you ask them to do first of all um, no confusion then you want to uh, correct and the player said okay but I didn't understand that so first of all you must be very clear in the message you pass second you must be very precise about the way you pass that message look at this example you have one kid the kid number one and kid number two kid number one if I shout with the kid number one uh, that probably could be a problem to that kid because he is not used to because his personality does not react very well um, to a shout or to an aggressive indication boy number two is a boy that if you shout with him you challenge him to another to another step you know to another level uh, and you if you know that if I challenge if I shout with that boy you will perform double if you shout with the other boy you will perform less so the way you pass your you, you communicate is very very important so communication not only in football but in life is crucial and if a coach cannot communicate uh, with his players uh, how can you, if you have a message to pass, if that message is not understandable by the players, then they will not put your message and your indications in the field as you want. So this is in football as uh, the same way in life. Right. Coach, the next, I have two final questions again. Thank you so much for your time. Is that you know, you talk about you know philosophy and how important to you know get your you know point across to a player and everything. So let's say, let's going back to the U15 side or U13 side from a grassroots level. Is it, would you say it's the same structure and mentality those, those coaches also put into the player that this is the style of play, the playing style of Benfica has been throughout the history and this is what we need to get you guys to the first team? Is that something that you coaches all come together and basically set stone that this is the way that, you know, it's more important, let's just say, that with this way of style as opposed to getting results? It's very important that... Uh because if the club has a way of playing and that way of playing is always related with the history of the club always uh, if this club and this, the history of this club is made by winning after winning and winning and winning lots of titles the first thing that you um, has to decide is I have to play in offensive way I have to play to win not waiting for the opponents, uh, waiting for the moment to counterattack. That's not the history of Benfica. So when you define the way of when you define a way of playing as the club has defined, ov obviously it was um, structure under the history of the club. Then of course you have to pass this to the uh, under 10, 11, 12, and along. As I told you, uh, you have to pass this idea, but don't forget that um, to build this idea in a field, 
you must not fool a player, an under 11 player, with tactical ideas. So, you have to measure the age and the specific content you have to pass in that age. So, under 10, under 9, under 11, under 12, they need lots of ball relation. They must uh, have technical, um, the, the, the training sessions, the feedbacks during the game must be turned to the technical level, not to the tactical. Of course, they have to have a minimum order to be in the field, on the field, but you can uh, direct all the work to a technical uh, idea. Then you are going up uh, under 15, under 16, under 17, and you start to worry about physical condition of the players to develop their bodies. Um, and of course, start teaching more the game. And if you want to teach more the game, you have to turn more to the tactical issues than to the others. Of course, keep working technical part, but now you are building up uh, a structure, which is a player, uh, in order that age after age, when you are, he arrives to the professional level, all the building is done and is complete. For example, he has to understand how to play in 1-4-3-3, in 1-4-4-2, for example, 1-3-5-2, uh, Uh, he has to understand what what is the the good moment for a transi offensive transition for a defensive transition. So, once again, is to uh, measure uh, the right contents to the right edges. Coach, thank you so much for your time. The last question is for you. I don't know if you know you're sitting alongside a rating, so we'll be in the world. I'm in the rating, so we'll be in the World Cup with you guys. So as a coach, I just want to get your perspective of um, where do you see Portugal going to the World Cup? <laughs> um, well, um, if you ask me four years, um, two years ago, if I believe that we will, we will become European champions, I will tell you that I didn't believe. We are, as I told you, an amazing football country with amazing football players and amazing people too amazing people amazing food and all of that <laughs> amazing weather uh, and amazing coaches uh, and i think when you can combine a very good coach with very good players you can reach the sky you have no limits to reach but of course uh, now if i analyze directly this world cup mm -hmm. i look to Brazil, I look to Spain, I look to German, to Germany, and I think that is very difficult because it's true that we became uh, European champions uh, with lots of, of merits, um, but we were also s some, we were some lucky uh, during the qualifying moment right. because That goal of Iceland in the last second puts the, our national team uh, in the other way and we didn't face Spain and Germany and all of that. Uh, we will need uh, some luck again and uh, I, I don't believe that we will become world champions uh, because I... I, I see Brazil, Germany and Spain as uh, uh, favorites to win this champion, this, this World Cup. Uh, so I don't believe in Portugal. I believe that Portugal can do a very good uh, World Cup, reach uh, semi-finals, why not? But uh, to become World Cup champions, uh, very, very difficult. Coach, thank you so much for your time for everything. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay.
Coach, this is Pasha Adrian speaking from Sightline Scout and Gold Vizan. It's a fantastic pleasure to finally meet you. I know you've been very successful um, from what um, you know Lewis has told me, and I know your first name is Lewis. Is, 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 I mean, I asked the previous coach, the U19 coach, that they just became champions, and of course he talked to me about you know the philosophy of the Benfica, how how important it is to install that in the players. From a young coach trying to, I know you work with the U15 side. How hard has it been for you to manage these players and basically to tell them about the history of the club and teach them about the philosophy? And then we made uh, what we call uh, elite group, uh, what, where 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 where, uh, where is we going to to be um, a list of that players that we believe that have the potentials to be in the professional level in a few years, uh, and it's. That, that list it's created in a common sense. It's not my opinion or his opinion. Okay. Uh, it's a collective. An, yeah, collective opinion. And then when we establish that, uh, every coach must respect that and give that players the best opportunities. Of course, it's 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 a little bit um, how can I say uh, elitist, but it's like this: the, the guys that we believe that are going to be in the first team, they have to be. We have to be more uh, um, careful with them, give them the best opportunities in games and tournaments uh, in the, the training ways. They, 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 they train more than the other guys. They have uh, much more uh, things that we... You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 because it's not, it's not, uh, it's not um, uh, a thing that we... Uh, it's not fair for the owners, but it's, it's like this. Uh, you can treat the, the same way the guys we believe that uh, going to be at that level and the other guys. Eh? They are, the, all of them are treated with respect and the, the same opportunities, but we have to be more careful with that players because we, 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 our work is to help them to, to reach there, it's not just create teams and winning and so on. Coach, the last two questions I have for you, thank you so much for your time, is that you know, a lot of clubs nowadays, they fail the process of realizing how important grassroots level is. You know, a lot of, they invest a lot of money, unfortunately, but the players still don't make it to the first team. Um, is there like a clear strategy for, you know, at this club that basically signifies of why you guys, even with the economy, there's so much money now in football and a lot of these players unfortunately don't get the chance, even though they're very good to break into the first team. Why is it that Benefica has been so successful, let's say, to still have youth players coming from the youth team and making it to the first team from your own experience? Uh, I think uh, when you start the question, you you already answered it. Right. It's in the grassroots. Yes. Yeah, our uh, initiation phase it's uh, working very good. Uh, if you, the, the, the guys who reached in the, in the last years, Ruben Dias, uh, Guedes, Bernardo Silva, Renato Sanchez, all of them started with exactly. eight, nine, ten, ten years here in Benfica. When when you in that uh, stage group, when you keep the, the best players when you pick the best players it's much more easier to, to keep working uh, in several years uh, and, and help them then if you have it's it's very important to, to, to pick in the the grass the grassroots the, 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 the best players if you have the best players it's much easier to, to keep working with them uh, uh, it's not it, it's much, much more important to have good players mm -hmm. to be able to, to, to let guys reach the, the, the professional level. It's much more important to have better players than better coaches. Yeah. Yeah? I'm, not, I'm not talking about <laughs> against me, but it's right. That's a good point. I can't, That's a good point. I can't yeah. do miracles if they, the, the kids don't have qualities. If, if they are even good enough, it's, it's impossible you to... To, to help them then it's right. impossible but when when they have the, the qualities okay we can work with them and help them develop them in uh, in a way that they could be even better that's why but if you don't have the good players if the the that's why the the, the scout is it's very important in, in that kind of clubs because you need to, to pick the the best or to to go and uh, uh, contract from the other clubs the best players in a younger age to and then with a long time we, we can work for, with them and help them to reach them. But it's, it's not possible if they are good exactly. enough.
Coach, last question, Alfred. Thank you so much for your time. Is what is your own personal ambition, whether that's you know for next season or just your long-term strategy with these players? What do you hope to achieve with these young players that you have, and um, what do you hope to you know get the best out of them, even as a coach? Uh, for us, uh, our main goal is to to keep help them and and, and to reach the the, the the first team here in Benfica and help them uh, reach the professional level. It's it's. It's the main goal of our work. It's that. It's that why we are here. Uh, but of course, uh, as the players, I, I hope that one day I, I could be also in the first team as a manager. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>